Hi, I'm Michael Manning from American Auto Wire, and today we're going to talk about relays. We want to talk about the purpose of a relay, connections, the types of relays, some uses, some examples, and we'll show you how to connect them up today on Tech Tips. first thing we'd like to do is, is let's take a look at the purpose of a relay. What are we trying to accomplish? Mainly we're taking uh, a small gauge wire and using it to trigger a device that allows for the transfer of large gauge or high current connection. One of the benefits is that we can use low current switching and that opens up a whole new possibility of how wires are routed, how, how wires go through panels, there's safety in that. Uh, also gives us opportunities for different uh, grounding techniques, different switching techniques. For instance, we don't necessarily have to switch ground to ground, we could use ground to switch power, power to switch ground. So a relay gives us a lot of flexibility, but mainly safety, wire length, weight, all of these contribute to uh, the benefit of why we have a, a relay. Okay, now we're going to focus a little bit more on relay types. The table here has a, a representative sample of a number of different types of relays. Um, the main one that we're going to come in contact with is a standard ISO relay. That comes in a 5-pin and a 4-pin variant. The 5-pin is called a Form C, the 4-pin is called a Form A. You take a look, you can have different variants of it. This is a shrouded relay, essentially an ISO relay with a shroud that fits a connector that's waterproof. And there's a couple of different variants of that here. Um, this is a micro relay. Uh, this is still a um, an ISO relay, but this happens to be a 70 amp version, and you can tell the difference because of the size of the blades. If you look here, you can see this. these blades are all the same size. On this one, quite a bit heavier blade on the input and output connections, which we're going to talk about. Uh, a standard three-prong horn relay, it has an internal connection that eliminates one of the prongs, and these are different variants of different relays that have different configurations, but essentially do the same thing that we're going to talk about what a relay does and how we connect it. Okay, now let's talk about connections. All of the relays that we're talking about here really conform to the ISO standard for, for identification of terminals. The diagram identifies the terminals in function and whether or not and what the operation is normally closed and normally open. On the side of the relay, it will give you a little diagram and it tells you um, essentially what the connection is. Another little thing here is if you look on the bottom of the relay where the, where the terminals are, it's also in most cases stamped into the relay base itself to identify those terminals. Uh, with that, we're going to talk a little bit about uses of the relay and then we'll, and then we'll go into some of the connections, hard examples. Here at American Auto Wire, we've looked at a lot of different applications and the most frequent ones we've actually made kits for. So we have a relay kit for single fan operation, dual fan operation. That's both for a 35, 40 amp standard relay. We also have another kit for the high amp, 70 amp relays that are used in some of the real high draw electric fans. Anti-theft relay has become real popular. We make a separate kit for that. And now we also have a universal relay kit that's both a standard relay and, if you remember what we talked about, a waterproof relay. So you can have the universal in either form. The universal kit comes with an instruction sheet that identifies 12 different ways that you can use a relay and shows you the hookup. Really flexible piece of equipment. We can use it for electric fans, either single or dual fuel pumps, power door poppers, power door locks, power windows, starters, horns, transmission neutral safety switches, headlight enhancement, brake light switching on cars with hydraulic brake switches, low capacity ignition switches, and another important aspect, 
reverse polarity switching. Real important sometimes in power windows. Okay, so now I want to show you a few examples of the flexibility of a relay and some basic hookups, but some things you might not be thinking of. Let's take a, a, an example of how we would use a relay to power a fuel pump. Two situations can happen. Don't forget, what we're trying to do is use the 85 and the 86 wires to energize the relay coil to pass power to a fuel pump. Now, as long as we do that, the fuel pump will, will turn on. But we can change what, how we feed. We can switch power or we can switch ground. No matter how we do that, that could be the, the trigger mechanism. In the case of your own car, you don't even have to have a switch, it could be right off the ignition switch. But the important thing here is that by switching either power or ground, it doesn't matter. Whatever I do to complete that circuit will ground it. In the case of those people with fuel injection cars, ECU is passing a ground signal. So you have no choice here. You're going to take the ground side, run it to the, to the uh, connection to the ECU that passes the ground, bang, turns on the fuel pump. The next example really pertains to how to hook up an electric fan. The relay itself, don't forget, we're going to energize the relay coil, and when we do that, power will be passed to an electric fan. The important thing I want to do here is introduce the uh, AC system trinary switch. It has a function. The function is to cut the power to the compressor, which doesn't affect the fan, but what does on a trinary switch is at 240 some pounds, it sets a ground. How can we use that? We can use that ground that this trinary switch sets to actually set the ground and turn the fan on because it sets the ground on the relay coil side and completes the coil circuit and energizes the relay. One important thing here that I want you to notice is that the electric fan relay can be activated by a switch, temp switch in the block. It can be activated by a trinary. It can also be activated by a manual override, which we also recommend. Here's one last example, which is a little bit of a twist, but it's important that you understand this so that you realize that a relay does not always have to pass power. It can be used as continuity across the 30 and 87 leads when the, when the relay is activated to do anything you want. In this particular case, what we have up here is a typical five pin power window switch, which is a reverse polarity switch. You move the switch one way, the window goes up, you move it the other way, the window goes down. Not everybody likes to use those switches because they're big. So in those cases, when you have it in your car, a single two pin switch, then you need some way to reverse the polarity. This is how you would do it with multiple relays. So essentially what you're doing here is you're using the 30 to 87 circuit up and down and they are in their normal state grounded. When you activate the relay by passing power from a small or a low capacity switch and turn one relay on, you're flipping power down one of those one of those wires, one or the other depending upon which one has activated. Well the the other lead stays as ground. So you, in effect, reverse polarity the motor by having a multiple relay situation. And this is really important, like if you're, especially in street rods where you use real trick little switches and low capacity switches, this is one way to solve that problem. But the lesson here is to understand its continuity across those terminals. And what we're doing with a five pin relay here which is what we're doing as a form, pin, uh, form C relay, you can see that the 87A lead is what is normally grounded because that's what happens when that relay is not energized. 30 to 87A is ground. So we have, if we do nothing with the switch, it's totally grounded. It's only when we activate one or the other that one of those leads gets current. That's a brief explanation of relays, uses, and practical application. Don't forget to look us up on our website and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.